Welcome back to Pop Tabs, keeping tabs on all your pop culture news. I'm your host, Matthew Yap, and joining me today is... Tanner Kinney. And... Gwen Holtquist. Gwen, you've never been on before. What do you do? Uh, I am a junior here at Ball State, and I'm a part of the WCRD team, and Fringed, I'm the president of a club here on campus. You bored me, but you Thank know it's you. not boring. <laughs> Stanley dying, that's pretty exciting. <laughs> what a good segue. I know. Stanley's super dead, guys. Um, so, <laughs> if you haven't heard, the famed comic book artist Stanley uh, has recently passed. It's very sad. Very Which is sad. why you're laughing. I, we all grieve in different ways. Uh, and the public has wildly mourned him and really talked about how he completely changed the media industry and his impact is really living on. So what are your initial thoughts on the news? Well, I mean, Stanley has done a lot of great things. He's created a lot of great worlds, a lot of great characters. Uh, he's been outspoken in like comics being like politics being intertwined into politics. Like I'm sure you've seen the image that was uh, going around Twitter, which was a screenshot of Stan's soapbox, mm -hmm. where he where he said people don't like po po comics having a lot of politics in them because mm -hmm. like I, I want to escape and I can't escape politics when I'm reading comic books if they have politics in them. Stan Stanley was like, you know. But they kind of need it. They do. Because all pieces of media are intertwined with politics mm -hmm. and current events. And he was doing a lot of good things. And he, I'm, we all love him. Uh, how much of that is because of his cameos in the, in the uh, Marvel movies? <laughs> yeah. Who knows? Uh, yeah, and that, it's definitely a shame to see him go. Mm -hmm. But he was also 95. Yeah, it was inevitable. Yeah. I, I feel like... Uh, Unfortunately, my my view of Stanley was sort of tainted once a bunch of allegations came out against him. Uh, whether that be, there's like a, accused things that he would say on set or like things as far as like, I know he wasn't a very uh, big fan of like the LGBT community yeah. and um, was against changing some of his color, some of his characters like races and stuff like that yeah and so that kind of i mean i loved him as a kid yeah and i understand what he did for like the comic industry but like overall i felt like i'm like yeah. everyone dies someday <laughs> <laughs> some sooner than others it's inevitable yeah well you're not the only one who's noticed this basically it took about 24 hours but people started to bring up he has a lot of lawsuits out against him not anymore but he did uh and everything ranging from like he was being accused of sexual harassment in the workplace. He had a live-in nurse who was suing him because mm -hmm. he was being inappropriate with her. He, like you said, said some things on set uh, people didn't super appreciate. And so there are a lot of accusations that this guy that was really beloved to a lot of people's childhoods and who really made a lot of media what it is now wasn't necessarily the best guy. So do you think that people are kind of shining a more positive light on him because he died and that they're ignoring the issues? Or do you think that people genuinely just saw him as more than what it was? Not necessarily your guys' opinions, but how you feel the media in general is portraying him. I feel like, oh, sorry. I feel like inevitably uh, almost anyone when they pass mm -hmm. their, their character is shown the best traits of their character yeah. and the best things they did which in his case he did a lot of great things especially for like the comics industry um but that being said you need to keep it in mind that people are people mm -hmm. and he may have not have been one of the best people yeah. but i feel like especially since he had such an a positive like public persona right because people like loved him unless they started reading about him and then that's when things got a little sketchy but he was really good at presenting himself as a super friendly old dude right you know yeah and i i think that along with you know good things being shown up when someone dies a lot of negative things mm -hmm. will come to light after someone dies because you can't get sued anymore <laughs> that's, <laughs> uh, that's just how it is so people will be like yeah this happened and I mean, he, he can't refute it. He can't refute it. He's yeah. dead. He, his estate could try to, but mm -hmm. would, would they really care to? Yeah. That's, it's, people, I, I feel like 
people are just, a lot of people are just springboarding off of him dying yeah. to gain social media clout or get likes mm -hmm. uh, and sometimes views on their YouTube videos. Watch Mojo. I saw what you did. I saw your top 10 list that came out when his body probably wasn't even cold yet. I saw it. To be fair, we here at Byte also reported on the death like eight minutes after it happened. So. <laughs> yeah, but we're, we're real news, okay? Fair enough. But no, I think a lot of it is that people do kind of want to be the one to be speaking. But I also think kind of in the fact that we want to talk well about him is I think it's extremely well known that like, don't speak ill of the dead is kind of a thing. And I don't know if that's necessarily correct. Because I mean, if somebody did something bad, it's, it's just bad. You don't need to like, talk about all the good things they did on top of it. Because sure, Stanley, I think was probably a very nice guy to a lot of people and he really impacted a lot of people. But if he did all these terrible things, I don't think that we should just ignore it because he's passed. Um, you do have to face the consequences of your choices, rather that be in mm -hmm. death or now. Ugh. But yeah, I, but I do understand why some people would want to kind of remember him for what he did, because he did mm -hmm. a lot of good. Uh, however, someone who didn't do as good uh, towards him was maybe Marvel, surprisingly. Uh, something that they caught kind of criticism for was the fact that once Lee passed, since he's such a huge part of the company, they all were like, we're so sorry, we're gonna miss him. You know, he was great to us and we love him so dearly. Uh, however, maybe not, because there was also a lawsuit against Marvel uh, for elder abuse and uh, the fact that they were kind of, some would say leeching off of his name, because a very, very old man was being maybe forced, not necessarily it's just allegations, but maybe forced to do all these cameos and stuff to get Marvel the popularity that they maintain. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah. Uh yeah, I mean, I think it's less Marvel and more Disney Marvel. I'm gonna blame Disney for this. Uh, more fair. Disney, because Disney is a large corporation and I'm done with them. Uh, it's probably, I'm guessing, a lot of the cameos that came out recently, mm -hmm. they recorded like way before everything else in the movie is what I've heard, yeah. is that they like preemptively recorded a ton of cameos leading up to his final one, which is gonna be in the next Spider-Man movie, uh, which uh, is Spider-Man Far From Home. Yes. Yeah. Uh, that's gonna be his last one, and from what I've heard, from what I've heard, they had recorded a bunch in a row, mm -hmm. and they're it's like Disney is pr trying to preempt him dying. It's like just let him die. Yeah. If he's gonna die, he's gonna die. Then he doesn't do cameos. Put a put a rest in peace message before the film. Don't he doesn't need to have a cameo in every Marvel film. I mean, is it wrong that a lot of people get joy out of this thing? So it helps the movie, so it helps the finance. And so if he's around to do them, is it wrong to want to get them out? I guess it's not wrong, but give the man a break. I guess he's elderly. <laughs> Just don't respect the elderly unless they're like really bad. And I guess Stanley was kind of bad. <laughs> So maybe not. <laughs> They're like the <laughs> issue. Was, Stan was Stanley worth treating well as an elder? <laughs> was the say. elder abuse okay? These are the questions we ask. We are joking. <laughs> elder abuse is never okay. Bite does not believe what Tanner Keeney just said. Keeney? Keeney. I don't know, Tanner. What, what do you think? Uh, I would agree with uh, kind of what Tanner was saying. Um, ultimately, I feel like since he is kind of like the face of Marvel, mm -hmm. um, he kind of already took on this role of being like this persona that would show up in every movie. And so like, you know, especially like big fans of the films, they would be like, oh, there's Stan Lee. And so I feel like he kind of had to deal with the, the role he took on. Yeah. In, a way, in a way, I feel like he really enjoyed being that character. I'm sure. Who like, was like memorable and iconic, um, but that's that's what comes with being an iconic figure. Yeah, so I'll say, cause I like, like watching the Marvel movies in theaters is like the second Stan Lee is on screen, everyone in the theater is like, ah, it's, Everyone's it's, chuckling. That's the thing. <laughs> and, like, I, and I mean, his cameo was the best part of The Amazing Spider-Man, the first one. And it was the only good hard. part of that movie. <laughs> it's not hard to be better than anything else in The Amazing Spider-Man. 
but Andrew Garfield. Ah, uh, he's great. Oof. Oof. But uh, <laughs> but the kind of I take issue in the fact that not necessarily that they made him do all the cameos and they had him working as old as he was. I take issue with the fact that now they're like, oh, woe is us, poor Stanley. Our beloved father and <laughs> face of company has now passed. Because you weren't treating him that well when he was alive. So yeah. I think it's a little <laughs> gross to now just be like, we miss him so much. We, we care about Stan Lee. Please buy our product <laughs> at Disney Corporation. We're, we're, we're happy. I, f I feel like it's kind of, oh, sorry. No. Just, oh, I have okay. nothing else to say. That was, that was the end of my statement. <laughs> um, I feel like it's kind of an ironic parallel to like the fact that they were like forcing him to do all these cameos and then even after he's dead, he's still making cameos in their like n news, like as a way of being like, oh. Poor Stan. Poor Stan. But poor us, more importantly. We're <laughs> happy. So with knowing that he has all these allegations out about him that people are talking about m more now, and knowing that maybe Marvel didn't treat him the best, and knowing who he was as a person and how he affected the industry, what do you think his legacy is going to look like? Do you think it's going to fall more onto the negative? Or do you think that he has cemented himself as someone good in media? I think it's going to be positive. I, I, that's just it. I, I don't think, I mean, we should talk about the allegations against him. Yeah. We should definitely talk about these things. But I think overall history is going to be more positive on him. Probably. Rather than negative. Because we idolize media figures. Whether that's a good thing or a bad thing, I'll let you decide. We sure do. <laughs> Ultimately, I, I agree. I feel like the overall general consensus is going to be that he had a great legacy and he's left a lot. Yeah. I think nine out of 10 people, they aren't reading the articles about Stanley's like lawsuits. I think nine out of 10 people are just gonna be like, oh man, the, the dude who was in that Avengers movie <laughs> and made that funny quip with Spider-Man, he's dead now. And that's what they'll yeah. remember him as. I think he'll be remembered as like a cute old man. Yeah. And not saying he's like a terrible person, but I'm saying that like the negative aspects of his life will probably be just glossed right over. I mean, I can remember even like seeing one of their films like three, four years ago mm -hmm. before like a bunch of allegations were like really coming to surface. Yeah. I would be like, oh, it's going to be so weird when he's not here. Yeah. And then now I'm kind of like, well, <laughs> stuff happens, I guess. <laughs> you know what other stuff happened though? <laughs> what other stuff happened? More Trump stuff happens. Wow, really? Mm -hmm. I can't believe it. I know, isn't it crazy that our president would do something crazy and stupid again? I'm shocked. I would Whoa. never believe it. But we're reporting this completely unbiased. I don't have anything against Trump. That's a lie, I have a lot against Trump. But we're gonna talk about this from an unbiased point of view. Hopefully. Uh, so after a recent White House conference, the president has revoked Jim Acosta's press pass. And basically he had a um, kind of press pass that allowed him into any White House event. And it gave him kind of like an ability to speak to the president directly and a thing that a lot of people don't have and that is taken very, very seriously. And so the fact that he's had it revoked is being really, really taken seriously. Uh, it was a press used for CNN. And CNN is now suing the president for infringement on Acosta's rights. So, what are your initial thoughts on this? Uh, if you want to start, Glenn. Okay. I'm, I'm formulating. My <laughs> All right. I I feel like it's. Um, I mean, once again, our president never fails to impress me with his uh, hypocrisy. Um, but. <laughs> <laughs> that being said, I, I feel like, uh, yeah, I think it's just really ironic that he, he says one thing and then he does another. So he makes the claim that, oh, you know, dictatorships are bad. Mm -hmm. But when you suppress the press, then it's, it's really hard to defend that as not being um, a sort of like, a power move. Dictatorship, a yeah. dictatorship. <laughs> yeah, in a way. So I feel like overall, it's just, regardless of what exactly happened, it feels very, um, very dictatorship -y. Emphasis on the d <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. I have a lot of feelings, Tan. <laughs> but what are your feelings Ooh. on it? Uh, well, there's the part of me that's like, 
Why would he do that? This is this is this is literal. This is literally infringing on your First Amendment rights. Mm -hmm. Freedom of the press, yeah. Quite literally going against the freedom of the press, but at the same time, as someone who probably against my better interests views politics like reality TV. <laughs> As cheap entertainment. This is a really entertaining feud to, to watch. But I'm so glad he did this. Who's he gonna give the press pass to? Alex Jones? Imagine that! But Tanner, it's not reality TV, and it doesn't matter if it's entertaining. It's is it right or wrong? <laughs> it's wrong, but it's entertainingly wrong. Tanner, do you believe you're part of the problem or the solution? <laughs> Both, I think. <laughs> it is not both. I'm gonna make that really clear. It's just the problem. <laughs> so I'm gonna play devil's advocate here. Mm -hmm. And the fact that Trump is not necessarily, according to them, and I get where they're coming from, infringing on the press's rights. He has said that Jim Acosta cannot come back into the White House. He's revoked his press pass. But that does not mean CNN cannot. It does not mean no press can. It means Jim Acosta came in and caused a problem. And that is why that has been revoked. So do you think it's fair that like this one person can get it taken away rather than all the press? Or do you think that this is just a press member who did not like Trump and so Trump would rather just keep his narrative the way he wants it and not deal with people who are against him? I think it's really convenient that the person who was stepping out of line was from a company that Trump has been against from the beginning of his presidential race. Mm -hmm. um, so I feel like, I, I, I get it if someone was actually causing something. I get, in my opinion, someone would have to be actually threatening or harming or doing something so extremely problematic to get this revoked, mm -hmm. and I feel like it wasn't completely warranted. Mm -hmm. So I feel like, in a way, it was a suppression of uh, Jim Acosta in general. Okay. Yeah, it was a definitely a suppression of Jim Acosta's rights. But I guess it's it could it would have been worse if he just like banned CNN. <laughs> he could have yeah. he, he could have done that. I'm shocked he had one. I, I'm I'm kind of shocked he didn't too. That would have been great TV. Yeah. <laughs> kind of my issue around it, besides everything Tanner said today, is the kind of idea that it, it's it's not the press. It's just this one press member. When Trump has been against the press over and over and over and over one more time again, and just the, also this idea that. He is the kind of final call on what is too much in the like press room because if you watch, basically what it was is that uh, Jim Acosta was like asking questions that Trump didn't want to answer and he continued to ask them. Uh, there also was a video of him hitting a White House aide who they really drugged that out. Basically, his, they're like arms hit and they ran with that and was like, well, Jim Acosta hit somebody in the room. He sucker punched a woman. <laughs> he Lies. sucker punched a pregnant baby. <laughs> <laughs> Live on TV. And so I don't appreciate the way it was kind of, I would almost say shady in that they were trying to make a narrative that wasn't necessarily true. But that being said, a lot of media outlets are reporting on what actually happened, including Fox News, which everyone was super shocked because Fox News was like, oh, that's messed up. We're standing with CNN, even though usually Fox and CNN are like I, I, hitting each other is, I guess, what I'm going for here. Heads. Butting heads. That's the word. Phrase. Uh, get off of my show. <laughs> <laughs> what are your thoughts on Fox and CNN working together? Uh, I... I I, I mean, it's surprising. It's yeah. definitely surprising to see Fox and CNN working together, because mm -hmm. you know they're Fox is conserv conservative, uh, CNN is left wing, so it's interesting to see them work like agree on something. Right. And if if they oh, agree, Trump, if, if the both great uniter, <laughs> if both of them agree something is wrong, and they don't agree on anything, there's a good chance. The thing is wrong. Yeah. Do you think the reason they're doing it isn't necessarily because it's wrong, but just because they want to like kind of save their own tail in hopes that like 
they never have to deal with. I like, mean, well, of media course, backlash. of course, absolutely. Like, they don't want to be next. No media outlet wants to be next. Like, what, 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 what? A Fox News member steps out of line. Trump's like, you're done. Get out. <laughs> so, does that mean it's not necessarily wrong and just the media kind of being biased? Hmm. Uh, Move on to another person. I, <laughs> <laughs> There's only two of us. <laughs> I feel like it's definitely uh, a move for personal gain on Fox's part. Um, I could see where if it, if I thought they had a great moral conscience, which I feel like most me in general most media outlets don't, mm -hmm. um, then I would say, oh, they're they're like standing up for the rights of all journalists and stuff like that. But in reality, I feel like they're like. Oh, they upset him. So if we don't put an end to this now, if we ever upset him, then it'll yeah. be finito yeah. for us. I'm kind of with you in the sense that I think all media is kind of biased, except here at by BSU. We're we're totally unbiased, we're which is why we started this segment by Matt Yap saying he's completely biased. I am not biased. <laughs> I, I'm biased against Trump, I'll give it to you. But we hear it by BSU or not. But I think all media is kind of biased in a sense. Mm -hmm. And the fact that CNN is always going to be left-leaning and Fox News is always going to be wrong. <laughs> we are not biased here at Bite BSU. I don't know what to tell you, man. I'm real liberal. It's my show. <laughs> but I think that there definitely is something that can be done to alleviate that, hopefully, because I, I think that personally, if they would just start, I don't know, working together in this sense, or at least going in the same path, that maybe would kind of solve this issue of like corrupt news. I wouldn't quite call it corrupt, I'd just say biased. But it would maybe work with corrupt news alleviation. But what do you guys think? Is there anything that can be done to make it less of a biased idea in the news? Wouldn't that be wild if this was all just a ruse and Trump was actually like a decent guy who was like trying to unite like <laughs> opposing Ooh. forces? Wouldn't yeah, that's what everyone said at the start of this and it only got worse. So. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. What if this is, I mean, people, people always say that Trump is playing 4D chess with the universe. All right, this is clearly 4D chess and nothing else, right? Clearly, oh, yeah. clearly, this isn't just a bitter old man being petty and bitter for no good reason. He clearly has a plan for this, right, guys? I, I would like to think so. Yeah. <laughs> Optimism here at Byte. I'm optimistic that he'll get impeached. <laughs> but on just the news, do you trust the news, or do you guys think that they're too biased? Do you think that it's there's any reliable news, or has everything kind of come at it with its own wrong standpoint? Whenever I'm looking for news that I would like to think is unbiased, it's always like uh, more uh, like bigger sources that mm -hmm. like like as like BBC or right. NPR BBC. or something like that. I generally feel like they're not completely biased one way or the other, um, but. I know they always tell you they're like, oh, look at like several different sources for one story, but that's hard. <laughs> and there's who has time <laughs> to read like six different sources for one article. So I think it's just like you got to take it logically with a grain of salt. Okay. Everything you read. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, personally, uh, I don't watch the news. I get all of my information from my grandpa Ted. I do not have a grandpa named Ted. <laughs> this is all a lie. Okay. Okay, thank Christ. <laughs> I trust the news. Uh, okay. I think that, sure, they're, it's bias, but mm -hmm. everyone is biased when they're presenting the news. You can't really take yourself out of, a, out of a situation in its entirety. Like, when you're writing, even if you're trying to be as objective as possible, right. it's really hard to not take your own personal narrative out of the experience. Right. Especially when you have your own, like, experiences and life story, like all of that affects how you view a piece of news. So even if you just reported on the facts, there's still going to be some way you write it that slants the story, depending on how you lean towards it. Mm -hmm. So of course the news is biased, a little bit, but I still trust it for the most part. Yeah. Uh, most news sources, le real news sources, of course, we're not talking about- Fox news. Uh, <laughs> 
I didn't say Fox News. I did. I was thinking more like uh, our good friends, uh, no good friends, over at Infowars. Oh, they're just straight up crazy. <laughs> they only exist to be made into memes. It's I'm true. convinced. Yeah. I, I personally, I trust most news sources. I think there are some that are more biased than others. Mm -hmm. But I think for the most part, they're all trying to tell the truth. Mm -hmm. It's just the truth is an objective thing, kind of. Unfortunately, it's just so weird yeah. to think about. But there are some people who really, really have a strange idea of what the truth is, and so those are the ones that I can't quite believe. <laughs> but I think overall, I have faith in the news. But you know what? I don't have faith in. What do you not have faith in? Man? Detective Yourself. Pikachu. And that's, a, me. that's a lie. No, I don't have faith in Detective Pikachu. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be really bad. What do you mean it's gonna be really bad? It's, it's a masterpiece in the making. I think you hate fun. That's true. <laughs> uh, but Detective Pikachu, if you don't know, is a movie that is going to be coming out next year. And oh boy, it, it looks like a thing. A to give thing. you a rundown, it is a hyper-realistic Pokemon in a live-action movie. And Ryan Reynolds, the Deadpool, you know, is Our voicing Pikachu, who is also now a detective, uh, and is speaking to this one guy to help him solve the crime of his missing father. And I don't know how no one else at this table can hear how bad that is. What? This sounds incredible, Matt. Explain to me how it's bad. <laughs> What are your initial thoughts on the story? Because clearly you guys have some opinions. What are they? I think our opinions are almost the same on this uh, one. Probably. <laughs> uh, I love Detective Pikachu. I love everything about the trailer. Like, I saw the trailer uh, when it dropped. I saw it pretty much immediately, because I saw Twitter immediately talking about, look at that Mr. Mime. Isn't that weird? <laughs> Yeah. And yeah, it's weird. But I watched the trailer, and I couldn't stop smiling during the whole thing. Mm -hmm. And of course, uh, I've been been a Pokemon fan since I was a small bab, mm -hmm. a small child. I, I love Pokemon. I never stopped loving Pokemon. Same. So seeing these hyper-realistic Pokemon, I always think it's interesting to see hyper-realistic Pokemon because Pokemon are kind of, you know, they're drawn cute in the games. Yeah. But like imagine, imagine in real life how they would look. They'd look freaky. They definitely look freaky. A Thunder Rat? I'm not about that. <laughs> Like the Jigglypuff in the commercial, <laughs> I was horrified. Yeah, it's not cute. It's, it's, it's not adorable. cute. But is it fun? Yes. <laughs> I feel like I feel like I have enough faith in the storyline, and I may be going out on a limb. What? <laughs> the storyline. I, I, I Pikachu with a Sherlock hat coming to <laughs> find a boy's missing father. Yeah, that sounds like something I'd pay ten dollars to see. I'd pay fifteen dollars for it in IMAX. Oh. See it in three D. This man's got the right idea. What is happening? I, <laughs> I, I want to see glorious Jigglypuff fur in IMAX three D in theaters for twenty. I'd pay twenty dollars for that. Yeah. <laughs> so you have faith in the storyline? Okay, but more so, and I may be showing my bias once again, I have a lot of faith in Ryan Reynolds. Okay. <laughs> because he, like, always puts a lot of, like, ever since I saw him in, <laughs> in the reboot of Amityville Horror. Oh, yeah. I'm... <laughs> I love me some Ryan Reynolds. That movie and, wasn't good, but he was good in it. But it's, yeah, that's the thing. I'm like, I have faith that if anything's good about it, it's gonna be Ryan. As a Pikachu mm -hmm. with the Sherlock hat mm -hmm. <laughs> solving a crime. Why? Exactly what I'm Why? saying. You, you see, I think there are gonna be some deeper story themes that we aren't picking up on, all right? Because clearly they're talking about dog fights, illegal Pokemon fights in the movie. You see that? That Charizard? That's not trainer. That's not a trainer to train Charizard. That's an illegal Charizard. I think you're one of the worst people I know. But so if you don't know, this is based off of a video game that it was released in Japan initially called Detective Pikachu, where it's kind of a similar idea. But video games are one thing, movies are another. And so some people think that this is the chance for a good video game movie. Other people are correct in thinking that it's going to be like every other video game movie and be god awful. And so, then other people are here just for a good time, yeah, other, Matthew. Other people are here for the schlock. 
Like, the shock isn't good. I don't like that word. That sounds very dirty and will not be on my podcast <laughs> anymore. Uh, the, the trash. Is trash better? It's trash is trash better. Trash is a better word. I'm here for the trash. I don't, like, you know, the Jurassic Park, Jurassic Kingdom? Mm. Like, if you're willing to admit it's trash, we're fine. The Jurassic World movie? That movie's terrible. But it's True. entertaining because of how trashy it is. Don't know about that. Detective Pikachu looks exactly the same, except a little more wholesome, and it has things I recognize, and I clap, like a Star Wars fan. And I clap. <laughs> so, on the video game note, do you think that this is what it takes for a video game movie to be good, is kind of this like ridiculousness, or do you mm. think a video game movie would benefit more from like an Assassin's Creed, where they take it a <laughs> little too seriously? <laughs> How do you want a video game movie to be done? Taken seriously or just full ridiculousness? If I ever see a serious Pokemon movie, if, if, I, if, if, they, if they play Detective Pikachu completely straight, it would be one of the worst things I've ever seen in my entire life. It's going life. to be. <laughs> It's going to be the worst. Sorry, didn't mean to interrupt. <laughs> like, that Assassin's Creed movie was terrible. It was unwatchable. Yeah, it was. Uh, so I think the Detective Pikachu movie will at least be entertaining in some shape or form. Mm -hmm. Even if it's weird, even if it's creepy, I'm certain some kids will get nightmares, yeah. but that's normal, that's fine. I think it'll still be good. I think it'll still be entertaining. I don't think, will it be the best video game movie we had? Of course not, that's still the Super Mario Brothers movie. That's the best one. Actually, to be fair, I'll take that because there's not a good one. You can't, you can't beat the Super Mario Brothers movie, but Detective Pikachu will come close. Okay. Fair, <laughs> you're so wrong. I, I, <laughs> I feel like for me, the key to a good like video game based movie uh, is to acknowledge that it's definitely going to be campy and a little cheesy um, without going out of your way to okay. like be overtly cheesy and campy and weird. Like I feel like that's because that's how I feel about like um, like sci-fi original films and stuff yeah. like that. Once they are super, super self-aware and they're like really trying to be terrible, then it loses the fun of like, you thought this was a good movie. Right, like Sharknado yeah. 1 was funny because, yeah. oh my gosh, they tried that. Yeah. And then Sharknado 2 through whatever, it was just like, oh, now they're just doing it on purpose. It's not as, it feels mm -hmm. inorganic. Mm -hmm. yeah. Exactly, and I feel like this, this movie will have the right amount of awful. <laughs> I, I do get what you're saying, yeah. and I can kind of agree to an extent where, for me, a video game movie, it can't be that serious. Especially like a Pokemon movie, mm -hmm. it can't be too serious. Because if so, we just, we're never gonna take it seriously. I don't think a video game movie will ever be good. I don't think the mediums translate. But if it were to happen, I would like it to be campy. Would I like it to be this? No. Would I like any of those Pokemon appearances to exist? No. <laughs> but There was an Audino in the trailer that looked pretty cute. No. You couldn't really see it because it was like in three frames, but it was cute. <laughs> I hate that you watched enough to see three frames of this. I went through frame by frame, Matt. Frame by frame. That's amazing. Get a job. <laughs> I need a job. I'm aware. It sounds like it, Tanner. Did you not hear him? He's a professional Pikachu, Detective Pikachu fan. fan. <laughs> oh, Lord, Tanner. <laughs> I, I have a MySpace devoted to Detective Pikachu. <laughs> I've aged so many years on this podcast, which is important, because <laughs> part of aging comes nostalgia. And so a big aspect of this movie is going to be nostalgia play. Some people say it's just completely based off nostalgia. Others think that it's the right amount. Do you think a movie relying so heavily on nostalgia is Bad. I know recently, like Fantastic Beasts got criticized for it, where they're not actually good movies, they're just playing on the Harry Potter nostalgia. What do you think is the proper balance for a movie to have nostalgia? I, I'm gonna be a hypocrite. I'm gonna be a big old hypocrite, believe it or not. Shocker. I hate it when movies bank on nostalgia. Star, Star Wars films, hate all of them. Ready Player One, hated that movie. I think it's gross and obvious. Like with the, in Rogue One, there was the you will be dead guy. Yes. Who they just had him in there because re recognize that. Have you ever seen Star Wars? That's what <laughs> they were doing. And Ready Player One, that whole movie was recognize that. Have you ever seen Overwatch? Iron Giant. <laughs> Maybe you'll be Tracer. 
<laughs> Maybe. <laughs> that's what that that's what that was Ready Player One. Yeah. And I completely acknowledge the fact that I'm like excited about this Detective Pikachu movie because I see Pokemon I recognize right. and it makes me feel good that I'm part of the problem. Yeah. But <laughs> You've been a part of the problem in every story today, Jan. <laughs> But, so yeah, I don't like seeing movies rely heavily on nostalgia, but I I have a good feeling that this movie won't be entirely like nostalgia based. Mm -hmm. Okay, like the Star Wars films or Ready Player One mm -hmm. or the Fantastic Beast movies, one of which we're seeing tonight. We are. I hate it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I feel like I I agree for the most part. Um, I think the key with doing this because there's. Ultimately, regardless, if you're going from a franchise that's been around for as long as Pokemon has, right. then you're going to be playing off of some nostalgia because that's where your fan base comes from, especially because I feel like the, I mean, other than children, the majority of people who are going to go see this film are people who have grown up playing Pokemon. Right. And so you're going to need to at least play that a little bit. Um, but I think they are going to take a, a new, fresh approach uh, to Pokemon storytelling. I, for me, nostalgia needs to be like, the idea can be nostalgic, the movie shouldn't be. Mm -hmm. It's like, the idea of Pokemon, I agree. Like, mm -hmm. get people into the movie theater because they want to see Pokemon again. My problem lies when like, the only thing you really have going for you is you're like, ah, it's nostalgic. Like, with Fantastic Beasts, they're like, ah, nothing cool is going on, but look, we're at Hogwarts. <laughs> like, there's Dumbledore. Yeah, classic guy. <laughs> there's Dumbleman. We <laughs> love Dumble. <laughs> Dumble. But what are you guys' closing thoughts on this or anything else we talked about today? Uh, personally, you have you have a question on here. What what '90s nostalgic thing do you want made into a movie next? I want to see Captain N. Okay. I want to see Captain N come back. If you yeah. don't know what Captain N is, it's don't. Nintendo's. It was it was a late '80s cartoon where Nintendo or it wasn't. I guess I think I, I assume Nintendo signed off on it. I really hope they did, because it was this really weird cartoon where they had they took a bunch of NES characters and they had some guy in a leather jacket with with an NES zapper. Yeah, it he wasn't was like, good. I'm Captain Nintendo. Look at me. Yeah, it wasn't good, but still, <laughs> Captain N for Smash. What do you think? Uh. I don't. Too bad. I was born in '98. <laughs> How am I supposed to remember things from the '90s? I just meant you closing your thoughts on anything, Gwen. Oh, oh, my bad. Yeah. Um, on all of these stories, you did bad. Yeah. I think we sometimes to we off. gotta we gotta <laughs> let things die. Um, <laughs> but that was Stanley, not nostalgia. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes we just have to let Stanley die. We need to just let, let people die. Let things die. I have aged 40 years. There's now gray in my hair after this podcast. <laughs> Love and you, Matt. I have been your host, Matthew Yap. Joining me today was... Tanner Kinney. And... Gwen Holtquist. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Phil hurts me so often. He also beats me at Smash a lot and deeply shakes my confidence in my core. He also, once again today, wore a red leather jacket. <laughs> <laughs> Phil Rabbit, we're done. Cut the show. <laughs> <laughs>